You know, back in the day, JTM was basically all over the place in all federations. He was in EWF. Uh, I always remember that cage match he had together with Alex Brooks against uh, Scott Hall and Kevin Nash. When I was getting my first footing in this industry, I didn't really know who JTM was. But I recognized the name. It echoed. Everywhere I went, people were talking about how he stole the show in EWF and in GCW and all these other places. Honestly, he kind of felt like a phantom to me. He was really big in WCFW, and pretty much all feds out there had JTM. He worked a lot of days. He was all over the place and quite successful at that. I finally caved in, and I saw him in action, and he just blew my mind. He was like... If a bolt of lightning and an explosion of fire had a baby, and that baby did cocaine and started a wrestling career, that's JTM. And he came to GCW also with Alex Brooks. Won the tag team championships almost immediately. They went on a very long run together. And then later on, JTM aligned with Rollins, and they became tag team champions. And JTM even won the Intercontinental Championship. So... His GCW career was definitely going well, and at that point, Rollins and JTM were more equals back in 2016. He took part in some of the most brutal matches I've ever seen, and he always came out on top, or he would, he damn near attempted to die trying. And then they dropped the tag team championships to the Hardys at the Royal Rumble. And uh, JTM got injured and didn't even make GCW WrestleMania that year. And I think that put him into a bad mental space. And from then on out, we've pretty much just seen him on um, commentary. He hasn't done much in the ring. I still find myself looking back at old clips to this day. And it just makes the reality of today's situation even sadder. When Rollins came back around with that Messiah persona and adding disciples to, to help him, JTM, I think, gained back a little bit of that confidence, but Rollins just will not let him get to that next level. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Seth Rollins is a piece of shit. We've seen like breakout moments, like his performance at WrestleMania 10 against the Bloodline was one of the greatest performances in GCW WrestleMania history, I thought. But, you know, Rollins just slapped him right back down because Rollins, I think, wants JTM to remain a disciple for him. He doesn't want JTM to break out and find success in his own career because, you know, that would ultimately hurt Rollins. So that's why he's, like, putting him down at every chance he gets. He manipulates... JTM and abuses him on a daily basis and I'm there front row to see it and I can't stand it. But despite my strong feelings, I just couldn't face the facts that JTM was gone. He was never coming back, he was just a lost cause. Rollins has him on a leash and he's never gonna let go. Not until a certain FAW guy had anything to say about it. EWF Nightfall, the same night where JTM had that hugely talked about match in the cage, Bane made his in-ring debut and embarrassed The Undertaker. After that, I was hooked. I was at the edge of my seat watching him bury Kane and go head-to-head -head with the Brothers of Destruction in a Hell in a Cell, the WrestleMania of that same year. Only to find that just as quickly as he showed up to the scene, gone just like that. Poof! And for years, I sat there wondering, when are we going to see Bane back in EWF? Hell, professional wrestling as a whole. And I got my answer in the form of F-A-W. Every single match that this man found himself in was a banger. And not only that, each and every one of his opponents has never been the same since. I mean, Bane is just a killer. We've seen him in the G1 Climax, what he can do how he went through all of his opponents, beating Brock Lesnar. We've seen him beat John Cena in the finals. He showed up to GCW 
in the biggest tournament of all time, and he won the entire thing in a clean sweep. We've seen him go against Will Ospreay, the world champ, and people say, and I have to admit, it really looked like he would have won that GCW championship from Ospreay. And when he went face to face with the world chump, he gave that British bitch a rude awakening. Bane showed Osprey that FAW was his house, and that title was as good as his, until Seth Rollins ruined the party. I'm not going to bore you with all the details here because I'm pretty sure we don't have enough time for it, but I will say this, a lot of people don't know this, but Bane and Seth Rollins actually do have deep and rich history in FAW, and it's all been uprooted once again here. To Bane, Seth Rollins was the one who got away. Seth Rollins is the only man on earth who can say that he pinned Bane one, two, three, twice. And I like to think that stuck with Bane for a long time. And now, Rollins, Bane, and JTM find themselves on the same chapter of this story we call professional wrestling. And I cannot wait to see what happens next. I think this match could be huge for JTM. If he uses this as his breakout moment to break away from Rollins, to gain even more confidence, to finally say no to Rollins. What does this match mean? This has been over 10 years in the making. Don't believe me? Look how the stars aligned here. For Bane, on the other hand, um, I think he, he feels for the man, like, like we've seen him say. You know, they have been on shows together back in the day. Bane has seen the old JTM, and he just hates to see what he has become. And obviously, uh, Bane also wants to get back at Rollins, and what a way it would be to restore confidence in his disciple so he would move on from Rollins. I think that would be the ultimate win for Bane here. Both of these men have made such a huge impact for EWF's history, GCW's history, the history of pro wrestling in general. They've inspired thousands of people to enter into this industry on their own merit because of how good these guys are. And all that, a little sprinkle of history, and you got yourself an underrated gem of a main event. I'm really excited to see what happens here in this match with JTM. The real JTM has been asleep for a long time, but Bane is about to give him a wake-up call. This is going to be something special. It's clear to me that Mr. Rollins has quite the death grip on your free will. I've been witness to the John trademark of old. But now, I have to admit, seeing you in this lesser state, relegated to nothing more than a sidekick, it even hurts a cold-hearted man like me. This may very well be the last chance that JTM has to finally rekindle that fire that burned inside of his soul all those years ago. Despite how desperately Rollins tries to keep it hidden, I know your true self. And maybe all that's needed to bring the John trademark of old back to the light is one special 
match with me. If anyone in the world can dig JTM out of this rut he finds himself in, it is the most feared man in FAW's roster, Spade. Allow me to open your eyes and show everyone, including Rollins, what John Trademark is truly capable of. Two legends, one ring, one match to change one of their lives forever. This is the Liberator versus John fucking Trademark.